Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2 with the most creative Terran player out there. In the red, it's the Admiral. It's Gumiho. Looking to defend Korea against the Italian invader, the Italian Stallion. In the blue, it's Raynor. And a best of three TVZ with Raynor trying his hand in the Global StarCraft League going all the way to Korea. And now facing off against one of its best and, in my opinion, most entertaining. So hopefully you think that deserves a like and potentially a subscribe. And Jimmy, what are we? It's not pretentious. It's just begging. I got 1,315 likes on this series, on this cast, and I'll cast another one. And I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And I've been looking for the, looking forward to this match for quite a while. So hopefully it makes your day a little bit better as gumiho recently seems to have unlocked a new tier i don't know what he's done but he seems to understand especially this matchup even better than they did before and the first reaper well he's able to survive yes the reaper goes around is annoying the queen terrestrially bound much to her dismay unable to take it out but gumiho um i believe it was last week showing Possibly the best Terran I've ever, like, bar not, not for Gumiho, but some of the best Terran, Terran bio play that I've ever seen. I don't know where he got that from. I don't know what he's doing. But right now, I think even more than usual, he's the Terran player that you should be looking out for. As he's always been willing to innovate. And now that he seems to have the macro and the micro to back it up even more so, Terranify. Rainer, on the other hand, is aggressive. Not to a fault, but much more than, say, a uh, Serral, or even to an extent, a Solar. Uh, he relies so much on his speed, his mechanics, to overwhelm and possibly drown his opponent in a flood of lanes. Maybe more accurate here on Oceanborn. But recently, that hasn't been as successful. It feels like between the map pool and just in general players getting a little bit better the less and less opportunities to rely on things like uh big zergling counterattacks, uh or massive flanks that catch your opponent off guard as as time goes on players just keep getting better i, I dare you i dare you to look back at 2011 or even 2016 and tell me that players were anywhere remotely close to the caliber uh, they are today and with very similar unit compositions for Terran, especially everyone but Gumiho Who is already going for a banshee and he's got an armory on the way He's faking cloak with interference matrix. So that way the overlord sees an upgrading tech lab But what is the purpose? So Gumiho already this is not that's a second factory. So it is Mac which is certainly um, the, the, Gumiho was voted most likely to go Mac uh, in the entire GSL and in his high school class. They knew many years ago. Gumiho, one of the few players older than me, he's 32 now. Um, might be dating myself a little there, but uh, I couldn't afford me. So, Starport moves on over to the reactor. Lair is on the way. Rainer getting it relatively early. Wants to make sure he has an overseers for detection against the Cloak Banshee. Little does he know. No Cloak Banshees at all. Not that it's going to be a, a huge setback. Usually you want the Lair relatively quickly, even against Mac. Though, were there any other indicators? Not really. There's no other info. You can mask the fact you're going Mac. What a save. And the Queeds. The Viking driven away. Zerglings are zoned out. Gumiho still... Oh my god, he's doing the double Thor hammer drop. Oh, a Gumiho classic. He's pulling out this... This was one of the uh, relatively recent, yet still vintage builds that Gumiho pioneered in Legacy of the Void. Two Thors, two Metavacs, and however many Hellbats you can crowd around their feet. And you just drop the Thors in and try to smash your opponent. Because the Queens... They just can't compete with the Thor armor. Uh, they might be able to get to the metabags, but the key part of this is your normal kind of 
Queen Zergling defense just doesn't work anymore because the Thors hit too damn hard. They are directly designed. Right, unlike the two Medivac Marine, you can't really zone this out. You have to either deal with it or die to it. And here comes Gumiho. The Overseer will spot the Thors. And the Hellbats are marching in. Rainer, somewhat blindsided, but he does have plenty of Queens. Brenda, whatever comes through that creep, hold the line. Oh my. Well, first wave of Banelings comes through. Banshee will be taken out. Thors are pounded their way through the Queens. Transfuse is looking good so far, but it's just Queens left against Thors. And still some Hellbats underneath, adding a lot of damage. The Zerglings were melted away. Well, Immolate is Zergling counterattack doing a great job on the other side. So if Rainer's eventually able to clean this up, Gumiho won't have as much economy to work with, assuming that Rainer doesn't lose his third or plenty of drones alongside it. Micro's one Thor back. Surprisingly agile. You gotta be careful with those metavags, though. The Thor inside will crash to the ground, and I think it, it should still be able to uh, fight with less health, but that's not how it works. Another metavag being targeted. Both of them in the red, but neither of them quite dead, and that's very troublesome here for Raynor. As Gumiho's double Thor hammer is just bashing through. Somehow the spore crawlers are going to be the real solution here. The queens get a little too far forward to kill that last medevac, and one heroic Thor will finally go down. Another one. Starting to be overwhelmed, targeting one more queen, gets it, and is ripped down by the ankle biters there and despite the amount of drama and damage Raynor maintains 73 drones throughout this he's about to have one one done another wave is coming gumiho is not going to stop not for you for anyone he will rule this ocean or see it burnt to ashes around him and you know if anyone's gonna make that work i think gumiho could as blue flame hellbats are on the way a couple tanks. He's not sitting back and turtling. He's putting spikes on that shell and rolling it directly into Raynor. But Raynor doing a great job holding so far. He's still got 80 drones. A wave of corrosive belly dodges out of there with the Metavax. The pirouetting elephants here in the Thors. Another wave of corrosive belly. There's only one queen left. He killed 14 queens. The monarchy has been decimated. But Raynor still has enough economy to go for the hive behind. Gumiho has not been able to put much of a dent in Rainer's income. Like, that looks like a dent, Winter. You know it does, doesn't it? But it <laughs> looks more like a canyon. And that's when the Zergling counterattack came in and Gumiho wasn't able to mine from his third. So technically, that wasn't Gumiho putting a dent in Rainer's income. It was Rainer putting a dent in Gumiho's and thus creating that canyon. So I'm going to be that pedantic about it. Technically, I'm right. But Thor's... Sitting back at home, the Hellbats here. Plus one mech weapons done. We got Cyclone Speed is being researched, but no Cyclones on the way. Vipers are going to be a strong choice. Rainer averaging 560 APM to Gumiho's 320. But Gumiho, uh, for those who don't know, is the sweatiest Terran out there. And I don't mean that um, as a derogatory term. I mean that as a medical condition. He has a condition called hyperhidrosis, so he plays with his mouse in a literal uh, hand towel because it gets so sweaty. And that is also, I think, partially why his APM is a little lower, as that is quite a unique and less efficient scenario. But at the same time, I think that has encouraged him to, like that particular condition has kind of encouraged him to explore strategies that other Terrans just kind of discard. Because while well, Beyond and Clem and Maru even might say, I can micro Marines, Gumi was like, what if we mech it happen? And that has just unlocked so many different dimensions of Terran play for him. And again, 191 supply, only 11 minutes in. We've already had so much aggression. It's shaped up to be a great game and great series. Because Raynor absorbed that damage. And now he's ready to strike back. Does he have, he has three Vipers. I don't know if they're with the army. Have they gathered their energy? No, oh, be careful! I d well, okay. Well, half HP on the hatchery. I always feel like just build a few Evo chambers for battery packs, right? <laughs> but rarely do we see that as the case. 
Another hatch. Going to be consumed. Sipping out a, a few bits of HP and converting them into that beautiful, beautiful energy. But Gumi, huh? No, I'm pretty confident in this one. He's got a few... Fusion Core! But he's got to fight this battle on the field first. Battle Cruisers with two more starports on the way are very likely going to be the choice as Gumiho's box art army was missing the fleet. But the Admiral is ready to call them in and Raynor unable to break him at least so far. So Gumiho going to try to take advantage of it. Raynor is working around the edges. He's chipping away at the strongest units, but Gumiho has the economy to replace him. This is the highest economy part of the game here where the main base still hasn't mined out. It doesn't start mining out of minerals entirely until around 12, 13 minutes. Gas is usually more like 15. Let's see. Ah, yeah, it's going to be about 15 minutes. So this means every base is still mining, especially the gas. And the incomes will never really get higher than this, as the rate at which you expand does not balance out the rate at which you start mining out. Oh, taking the wrong path. The Thor taken out but there's more where that came from we got hellbat drops three battle cruisers in production yamato cannon is being researched at the fusion core and a hellbat incinerating a couple drones the the vipers continuing to consume that uncomfortably not full hp hatchery it's in the orange now and autumn colors are never where you want to be all right another brawl Three battle cruisers, more Thors, plus three mech weapons. Rainer, does he have a greater spire? He has a spire, but he hasn't made it great again. So, without that, the options are, are somewhat limited. Has he spotted the fusion core? Does he suspect the battle cruisers? Gumiho doesn't make boring units like ghosts. All right, Gumiho instead is opting for the strongest late game, but the big glaring potential issue is in production right now neural parasite for the investors well that's the big issue an even bigger issue are the uh, ultralists making their way down the pacific rim style battle is shaping up with the thors battling the ultras thors actually beat ultras in um if we're in some sort of unit test or arena and they have enough of them but on the open field with zerglings underneath, it becomes a lot harder for the, the Thors to find success. Of course, battle cruisers look down on both of them. Oh, the Thors, of course, can look back up. Neural Parasites are done. The battle cruisers are gliding around. Corruptors are on the way. He must have noticed the battle cruisers somehow. As he's building six corruptors. I guess that's to help zone out the vikings for the vipers otherwise you end up losing the vipers in pretty much every fight but here come the battle cruiser gliding their way through going to take out at least one hatchery easily here already plus one ship weapons and armor with plus two armor almost done and plus two ship weapons begun hell bats over to the right small battle group in the center that both players ignoring in the midst of this yamato cannons on lock Fires off some shots. Actually going to be enough to take out the Corruptors. Ultra is going to clean things up. Parasitic Bomb makes it dicey. Able to drop off their payloads and, well, for the most part. Meanwhile, two out of three battle cruisers survive. Three more on the way. Time to jump. Oh, ends up losing one. The Hellbats, though, killing drones. Some SCVs were taken out. One battle cruiser. Only one battle cruiser going down. Looks like the others were able to jump away. And there's five battle cruisers, six tanks. He's just building siege tank battle cruiser Thor. Gumiho is the highest level, highest MMR, and most accomplished Bronze League hero in StarCraft 2. Does that it's not a contradiction. It's a state of mind. It's an idea. Alright, it's a lifestyle. 14 infestors on the way for Rain, with a direct response. Because if he can borrow 14 of these units, um, battle cruisers, Thors, or siege tanks, even if he gets half that many. Uh, but the infestors with the uh, map hack with extra steps here, 
He's got 11 orbital commands. Yeah, he can scan most of the map most of the time. At least the relevant parts. Incinerating more drones. Oh god, those Hellbats do so much damage. And it feels like Raynor has not really found any consistent way to attack in Agumia. There's the Greater Spire. The Infestors were spotted, so Gumiho going to be covering for it. Doesn't build a Ghost Academy, builds a Raven instead. What a principled Terran. Oh my. Nine battle cruisers. Five Thors in production. Oh, Gumiho. Oh, Gumiho. Once again, a cinematic army. <laughs> He's got 2-2 two, two done in the sky. The Infestors... Uh, this entire time we've been talking about Gumiho, but Raynor has plenty of money in the bank. On paper, he's building the army to deal with this, but we don't really play on paper. And now we're gonna have to scribble down even less SCVs, as Gumiho clearly throwing them away to fight spine crawlers off of creep, which... A uh, bit of an awkward scenario as well. Six... Brood Lords in production. You gotta be careful not to... Oh my god, a Ventria scan. He, he's, he can essentially just keep track of the Infestors with a constant scan. And that may very well be worth doing. He's built even more orbitals here. 11 orbitals. Still the number. The Battlecruiser strafing the base. Easily take it out. There's not that many bases left to go. Gumiho with a slight income lead, but income really isn't the relevant part of this at the moment. Those center bases, one on each side, will be the final contested ones. Gumiho's now taken the 12 o'clock. Another Thor, going to get grabbed and killed. The banks are nearly even, but I am hard-pressed to see Raynor taking out this army cost-effectively. Is there high-sec autotracking and building armor? No. Gumiho without those late-game building upgrades. The only thing he's, he's kind of missing here. He's working on 3-3. He's going to have a fully operational, fully upgraded mech army. Oh my god, he dropped like 20 mules, which isn't even efficient, but it is... Certainly effective. He's, yeah, you know, gonna mine out that base in record time. And once you mine out a base, there's really no more purpose in keeping a hold of it. Throws away another dozen SCVs. The battle cruisers, they have tactical jump, which means they can go from one place to another far quicker than even the Zerg. You can't nidus your corruptors. Wings and ultras, just gonna chew through Gumiho's base. Gumio takes one in trade. So the mule is not able to get the full time mining, but still plenty of minerals dragged out of the base. Here come the infestors. I'm sure Gumiho knows they're on the way. Yeah, he sees them. Jumps to the other side to hunt down. And he's just scanning the infestors across the map. I mean, can you stop him from doing so? The sporist, well, more like a sporchard here. Will be taken out. 3 3 done. There is no stopping him. Not without killing the orbitals, which is, uh, really kind of precludes killing the army itself. The orbitals are no longer an issue if you get to them, because that means the army is very likely to be dead. Tactical jump is recharging. Halfway off cooldown. 3 3 in the skies for Rainer. Trying to find the infestors. They're hiding underneath. Infestor brood lord. Ah. Raynor still has more money in the bank. So, like, at the end of the day, in order to win a game of StarCraft, you must kill all your opponent's buildings. Usually it doesn't get that far because one player realizes it's almost impossible to defend the rest of their buildings, if not impossible, and will tap out of the game. But we're still a long way off that. 
army values over 9,000 minerals. 71 and 7,300 gas, respectively. About as large as armies get while there's still workers on the field. That is so many Thors. He has a raven. Scan spots the infestors. I, I actually have no idea. He's, he's baiting him. Oh, he's gonna jump once the neural is committed. He's gonna tactical dunk. Ah! Here it comes! And here are the neurals, the fungals. He grabs somebody, unleashes the Yamatos beforehand. Try to take out the infestors. And if one or two battle cruisers go unchecked, the rest will as well. The mech army is bashing through. And go me ho with a decisive, dramatic, cinematic victory. I think Raynor knew it was coming, but what can you do? Raynor will rebuild 11 Ultras and 24 Zerglings. And that's the rest of his money. 20 Corruptors. Now we've got some Cyclones. I think he just wants something to get out on the field. 12 Ultras. The last gasp here. Gonna be able to take down another one of the battle cruisers. And Zerglings actually ripping apart isolated Thors. Meanwhile, Gooby Ho, not stingy about where he lands those command centers. Corruptors about to take out the last battle cruisers. Three of them survive. More infestors on the way. Rainer has 27 drones left. Neither player has the Inca. Ultra chasing down the Thors. But there's not really that many Zerglings underneath. Still, though, the Ultra is easily able to deal with it. But the Cyclones! The Cyclones came in. He held them for this long. They don't care about the blinding cloud. The battle cruisers are still strafing the Ultras. Gumiho battered down to 100 supply, but Raynor has only 76 of his own. Gumiho, the Cyclone choice, saving the day. If he had waited for more battle cruisers or Thors, they would not have been out in time. But the Cyclone's showing up. And as they lock on, Gumiho earns two Gs out of Raynor. And he'll take game number one with the Battlecruiser Thor composition. Though Raynor almost having enough to sweep it away. It looked dicey there for a moment. But the tactical dunk on top of the infestors. At the end of the day, the problem is if even three or four of the Battlecruisers are not neural parasited, are not taken out, well then they can turn their laser batteries on the infestors that are neural parasite and free the other. And a key part was he queued up the Yamato cannons. So essentially the neural parasite could not land by the time the Yamato cannon went off, guaranteeing it could not be used against him and helping out with the infestors. So that brings us into game two with Gumiho taking a dramatic, though relatively close game one. Rainer with the right moves, but maybe not enough of them in time. At no point did it really feel like Gumi Ho lost control of the situation. From the hammer drop, to the mech follow-ups, to the battlecruiser switch, to the late game maneuvering. It was all Raynor reacting to Gumi Ho's moves. So, the chess master on the, in the red, the bottom right of sight Delta, up against the Italian stallion, in the top left in the blue, Gumiho match point. It's one of those that, just from my perspective, it, it really does feel like... It, I don't think Raynor made big mistakes in that case. He didn't scout the mech in too timely of a manner. It's very hard to tailor a response to that sort of style if you don't know it's coming till, for example, the Thors show up. If you don't have uh, enough roaches or something to shut it down at that time, you're just playing keep away for as long as possible. So Raynor actually handled the initial attack timing really well, a lot better than I thought. But at the end of the day, that gave Gumiho the initiative. It gave him the ability to dictate the pace of the game. And while Gumiho doesn't play at the fastest pace, he plays at a very confident one. And those battle cruisers again. No one seems to be able to pull that off like Gumiho. Picking the timing. Like, it's not late. It's not like a late game choice. Uh, I, okay, it is a late game choice. But it's not like a desperation move. 
It's a distinct timing where the battle cruisers come in and again swing the game back into his favor. I gotta, I gotta once again point out, not a single ghost. Not even a hint of ghost. Didn't build a ghost academy, just, and you know, if he could add in ghosts with the army, it would probably be even stronger. But it is immensely hard to control all those incredibly powerful huge units and also make the ghosts valuable as well. And Gumiho didn't have that much money at the end to spare. Is he just going to do it again? He's Well, this time he's getting cloak, but there's an armory on the way. So this might be a different flavor of a similar dish. Overlord speed on the way for Raynor, but Overlord speed is 100-100 to find out uh, that you're going to need to spend even more. Is that fake cloak? I think he's going to complete it, even though he got one Banshee. So there's a raven on the way behind. I wonder if Gumiho is entirely anticipating the Overlord. No, you probably wouldn't start cloak that early if you were. Just wait till the Ovi shows up, right? Yeah, why not? Oh, the Hellions on top of the Queen. Brenda! Why do they keep doing this? Oh, so hot right now, Susan. So hot. That's not funny! I'm not... Well, the Cloak Banshee had a lot of damage. The Hellbats! Hmm. They be grilling while you be chilling. Oh, the other way around, actually, I think. But... <laughs> Hellbats chasing down the Queen's Cloak Banshee. God. Gumiho. That one cloak banshee still adding so much damage. The Hellbats immolating so many drones. The cloak banshees can hunt down the queens. Another one bites the dust. Six Hellbats and a Hellion, which apparently are distinct on the units lost. Oh, Hyper She's as well. 33 Zerglings and four queens and a couple drones. So, a pretty solid haul for Gumiho so far. There's still a Hellbat in the bay. What are you doing? Why are you still here? Well, he's not going home, so. I think the Overlord about to spot it. Anything to distract for just a moment. Meanwhile, Hellion's trying to come in toward- No, my god, is it gonna get kills? Of course it is. All right, any amount of drones for this, and the mining time now too. It's running entirely. The queens had abandoned the main entirely. More hellbats coming in towards the third. They do so much damage when they're finally able to get close. The entire main cleared out for that one hellbat. The hell chad right there. Oh lord, he coming. And now it's going to be Hell Clone straight up. A much more mobile version. Similar vibe, but a uh, different beat here, if you would, to the mobile mech army. Instead of Thor's as a big baseline backbone, instead we've got the Hell Clone Banshee to just constantly dance around the field. And it looks like Raynor's going to do a advanced German taxi build here for the Queens in order to break the third. Does he have road speed? No. Just mass zergling queen. Ladies, into the overlords. That looks a little cramped, don't you think, Lucille? Well, maybe if you cut down on, on some of the, the creep, then maybe it wouldn't be so cramped. But, you know, I don't make the rules. All right? I don't make the... Maybe I should. Karen. Karen. Stop. It's... Just stop. Okay. <clears throat> We're flying again. That's what matters. Unfortunately... The queens, wait, the queens are on their own, but the SCVs are pulled to fight the queens. Gumio's army is on the wrong side of history right now. The Zerglings overrunning the Hellions, and the queens, a real attacking force that clears out the third base. Gumio drops down 40 supply as the queens angrily dislodge the third. The Zerglings overrunning without any Hellions at the back. The Raven is going to be targeted and taken out. Rainer's queen timing doing incredible here the the kind of off-tempo play no transfuse unless you're on creep and now rainer's going to have creep spread 
on the other side of the map. All right, Cyclone Helshi up against the aggressive. Well, now the Queens. Okay, so, huh? The Queens are walking. Uh, oh no! Well, their taxis got taken out. Where are you going, La ladies? How did this happen? Where's our ride? Uh huh. So the queens being halfway across the map with no chauffeur. The overlord drops into the main. More drones are dying to the banshees as Rainer struggling to consolidate the queens. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Well, there's a spire on the way. Gumio's down to 45 workers as Rainer has 61 drones back at home. And trying to take back some semblance of control of the situation. Gonna go mutiling. Cyclones do have anti-air capabilities, but they're relatively um, cumbersome units. So they don't do incredible in even numbers against the mutas. If you have zerglings underneath, especially another banshee gets taken out. Finally, the queens make it back home to the creep. And hellbats looking for more. Rainer up 40 supply. A lot of that in the army, but this is hell. That's so many cyclones. And just chasing things down. But the zerglings from the back. Yeah, they're trying to chew through. The, ba the Muta's just heading right off to hit the other side of the map. That might be the right call. Cutting off the reinforcements. Roach Ravager battling it out against the clones. Roach speed is done. 1-1 one, one upgrades for Gumiho. Nothing for Rainer, but the, the mutas are in the main, and there's no semblance of anti-air. There's not even an engineering bay. The mutas are ransacking the main base. Vehicle weapons. Level 2 is done, though. The Cyclone's still getting so much damage. Gumiho getting desperate. 14 SCVs down. He's down to 42. That's gonna have to be the answer. It has been in the past. Five Cyclones and a Banshee on the way. More Roach Lane for Rainer, who doesn't really have a follow-up to this. The Mutas still going to work. The main base has been cleared out. Revenge for the Hell Chat. Gonna look for some more SCVs. Gumio pulling together whatever he can. The Cyclones going to have to be the spot defense here. And the Mutas. It looks like Rainer just going to lean heavily on that Roach Ravager. He's going to try to get something done that he couldn't before, which is actually break the army. The Banshee is still going to work, but here comes the Roach Ravager. The Cyclones are backed into a corner. They don't have much room to maneuver at all, but there's a lot of them, and they have plus two weapons done. All right, more Roach Ravager coming in. The Banshee going unchecked, but the Cyclones definitely getting cut down. The SCV is going to be targeted. The Orbital Command itself is vulnerable. Another spray and pray of clones. The Zerglings coming in will draw some fire as well. The Ravager count starting to thin out, but more coming across hits the Banshee. The Banshee goes down, and Gumiho is running out of Cyclones. The Ravagers are being targeted. The plus two plating is now done. Muta, a single Muta. Seven kills will run away. Ten more SCVs down. Mules will drop as Gumiho has four bases done. Another dropper lord is on the way. Rainer trying to keep the aggression on. He's only got plus one ranged attack, but he still has the economy. Gumiho is one look away from losing this game. Rainer's off tempo queen timing. The uh, royal rush there was enough to keep Gumiho down. And now Rainer just needs to knock him out. The Mutas come in. Well, the Muta, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's Reflex. The Muta comes in to get some more damage done. He's working with every single glass tool here. But, Gumiho is restabilized. It's the upgrades against this sort of army, especially against the Zerglings, but even against the Roach Ravager. The, the plating upgrade for the Cyclones. He's helping out a lot. The weapons are good, 
but the plating allows them to tank a few more hits and build up that critical mass. And so far, that's the only thing that has stood between Gumiho and Annihilation. Rotravager. Another Rotravager ball coming in. Are there any siege tanks? Just one, but three in production. Plus three mech weapons. And oh, a Banshee to save the day. Roach Burrow move. What a game. What a series. Raynor again asserting himself. This game, Gumiho, he took the initiative, but it wasn't enough. And Raynor coming out with a crazy attack of his own. The only downside here, well, the big downside for Raynor is it cost him a lot of his potential tech. He's now just getting a hive at 13 and a half minutes. Gumiho built a fourth command center and was pumping double upgrades while actively dying. <laughs> which if he survives he's still in an okay spot if he doesn't well it's not really important anyways so i think that like having two or three more units as opposed to the upgrades may have helped hold but gumiho played for this position here or now he's almost even on supply and it's all thanks to the upgrades on those cyclones allowing him to hold the line to get this sort of army but he doesn't have that overwhelming map control that he did in game number one. He doesn't really have an easy way to deal with vipers either. He's been reliant on cyclones, which are much more fragile creatures than Thors and Hellbats for the cost. As Rainer, very happy to demonstrate here. Especially with the Zerglings to eat the lockouts. There's a bunch of burrow move roaches that are uh, underneath as well, as they do. But <laughs> I, th I don't know if he noticed. Oh, he's going to try to use the siege tanks against the SCVs. He's spread out. He knows the tanks are there, but he's overrunning. The siege tanks. Oh, no. He's not quite controlling it. But the friendly fire does. Oh, my God. 15 SCVs dead. I don't know how much to siege tank fire and how much to the roaches themselves. But now Raynor has a 30 SCV. Nope drone lead. He's making his spire great again. The Banshees are still chasing it down. Plus three plating is nearly done. Again, Raynor is really struggling on the upgrades, but the sheer quantity of units he has on the field. Well, he's playing Zerg, all right. Adrenal lands. Gumiho's third is, is tenuous until the... How many? He's got 20 Cyclones and nine Hellbats. Mm. The factory, eight factories, and a starport. Uh, the Muda! <laughs> what a hero. It's got 13 kills. And counting. The Cyclone's finally coming back. Oh, no. Have to pay respects. The Hyper She is on the other side. Still looking for kills. How many Banshees has he? He's lost six Banshees. He keeps just building them. And why not? There's no built-in anti-air with, with Raynor's army. He doesn't have any corruptors, at least at the moment. No hydras. The queens, well, they were cut down a long time ago and they'd never been rebuilt up to quite their original number. Things will slow down as both sides... Oh, Gumiho survived. That's the key here. The army supplies have been in favor of Raynor. For most of the last 10 minutes, but this exact moment is when Gumiho will take the lead. And he's got 3-3 mech. And that's a problem and a half to deal with. Reiner does have the Greater Spire. He does have Vipers. Does he have Neural Parasite? No. Whoa, oh, oh. the sheer girth of this arm. The Cyclone Hellbat takes up so much physical space. The Quibranda! The, the Banshees are just clicking on the bases here. The Hatchery already badly bruised. Seven more SCVs dead.
cyclones. Chasing things down. More Roach Ravager. Here come the Broods. Cyclone's not a great counter to the Brood Lords, especially in large numbers. Finally, Thor's on the way. And the Siege Tank's going to hurt a lot more than help. Especially if it's just Brood Lords. Banshees. Parasitic Bomb on the Banshees will take out one. Corruptors will finally take out the other. Most of the Cyclones... Well, he's actually splitting. Are we going into a base trade? Madness. As the Cyclones heading south here. So many drones dying. He, he might be able to take out one base, but Raynor comes back before even taking out a base. He wants to flank the army with the Broodlords, but the Cyclones are splitting the difference. He grinds through two hatcheries and gets 23 drones alongside him. Gumiho loses a bunch of his Cyclones, but he has plenty of economy to rebuild. 63 SCVs. Raynor's down to one base mining at the moment. Gumiho just outmaneuvered the whole army. And if he can rebuild before the Broodlords come back across, but the Cyclone's getting caught by the Zerglings. So that will cut into the army supply. There's one Banshee over here. The Cyclones back to the left. The Broodlords, they need a tactical jump. Four Roaches guard the way, but it's not going to be enough. Playing defense here seems like a losing battle for Raider as time goes on. Anti-armor missile on <laughs> Overlords and on Corruptors. More Cyclones coming in. Banshee. There's units all over the place. If I didn't know better, I'd say Gumi holds the Zerg with how the units are moving right now on the minimap. Oh, Roach Ravager. Rainer's down to 150 over 136 supply. Gumiho has knocked out so many Overlords. He just... He found the Overlord Conclave and he murdered them all. The women and children lords too. The Matter Lords, even, potentially. Every Lord dead, besides the Broods. So now what? Now what? 11 drones. The Broods are back in the main, but it feels like something... I, I, Raynor tried to come across the map with the Brood Lords, and Gumiho just split into three mini Gumihos that attacked three different locations simultaneously, and Raynor just spun around and didn't find anywhere to go. And now it's... He hasn't touched Gumio's 69 SCVs, which is more than nice enough to maintain that economy. Ten Cyclones at a time. The army is nine Broodlords. What a back-and-forth battle, but... Gumiho outmaneuvering. And now Raynor is going to have... He still has a hundred army supplies. He's got four infestors on the way. There is a dream. But it's a whisper of one. Are there any corruptors? Seven corruptors. All right. It's one banshee. He has detection. Don't know why the SCVs are there. The cyclones waiting again. Oh my god, he's supply blocked. God, the, losing the overlords is devastating. The army supplies... Because Raynor's economy is so poor. Means the army supplies still close. Neural Parasite. Uh, a bit predictable at this stage. Look at Gumiho on the minimap. Wow. I, <laughs> that is so much tear in there. Infestors throughout the fungals. How much is on the ground? Catches some more of the Corruptors. Here come the Thors. Neural Parasite's still a long way off. Looking to pound the point home. Underneath. Dropping down the Broodlings. Cyclone swinging in. Gumiho with 82 SCVs. Even if Raynor wins a fight, it feels like Gumiho has already won the war. A wave of Corrosive Bow just kind of whipped out there. money in the bank. It's too much. 
Gumiho just waiting for Rainer to move out so we can move in for the kill. Gumiho was down 30, 40 supply. He held the line just barely. And he's been able to bring it all the way back. The Broodlords, another army comes in. This is just going to keep happening. The Broodlords can't split because they'll easily be killed. He needs all of them together to fight either army, but Gumiho is not giving him a target. And Broodlord's zoning out the Cyclones. Raynor with nothing left on the board here. And to cap things off at the quarter base of Fusion Core. Even though well, he knows that at the end of the day, if Raider somehow survives, the most dramatic way to end it would be the battle cruisers. But here come the brutes. 126 supply. The Queen, Brenda! In fact, Raynor has more army supply. Gumio's just not gonna fight him. And the only way to lose is to take a heads-up engagement against the Infestor Broodlord. Raynor cannot force a fight. He's just kind of desperately sending the Broodlords out. There are four battle cruisers in production. Rainer has two drones left, and he's quickly running out of buildings. The burrowed infestors. A starport being targeted. I think he knows what's building out of it. The burrow festers. He grabs one. The tanks are unseaged. So Rainer, wait, is this? Is he going to eliminate him? There's a, a greater spire taken out of the main, and Gumi Ho. Raynor has not rebuilt his base. There's a spore crawler. Oh no. Anti-armor missile. Here come the tanks. There's a spore. And an extractor. G. G. It took a little longer than expected. But Gumi Ho. We don't even see. The time it was down is able to hold the line and drag it all the way back. Gumiho's command of the fleet and the army underneath is enough to hold on against Raynor's just relentless aggression until eventually it just couldn't go any further. An epic series. Unfortunate for Raynor, but always great to see Gumiho's take on TVZ. Hopefully it made your day a little bit better, and if you got the means and motivation, it'd be awesome to check out Patreon. Uh, or YouTube membership, but I hear liking and subscribing is still free for now. Uh, and if you haven't yet checked out the second channel, um, Winter Gaming, Winter Gaming TV, you can find the info in the description, streams, more content, got more hours on the day, I'm not here to judge, but otherwise, check out Recommended as well. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Good luck, have fun. Stay chill.